Hey guys, and welcome to the fourth video in my intermediate Python tutorials. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over the filter function. So this one is very similar to what I did in the last video, which is the map function. Um, but obviously it has a few differences, but the filter and map function are nice to learn back to back because they can be used together. Um, and a lot of people do use them together when they're making uh, programs. So I'm just going to go ahead and start off by typing out two functions here uh, that we're going to be using in our examples. So I'm just going to make one function called add seven, which is simply going to return seven. And I'm going to make another one, which is called is odd. And it's just going to return if the number is an odd number. So the way we do that again is x modulus two does not equal zero like that. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now I'm just going to make a new list. In this case, I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then we'll even add a 10 in there. And now I'm going to go over uh, what the filter function does. So I want to assign our, uh, a new variable here, create a new one. I'm just going to call this B and I'm going to make it equal to list filter, which is the name of our function, just like this. And now filter function actually takes the same arguments that our map function did in the last video. It takes a function and it takes an iterable uh, list. So it can take a string as well, um, but typically we just pass it a list, something that's iterable and that you can go over. Um, so what I'm going to put in here for our first function is I'm going to put is odd and then i'm going to give a list a now the way filter function works is if this value so it's going to it's going to do the same thing the map function does it's going to pass every element in our iterable item uh, in this case the list to the function is odd so it's going to start with one it's going to pass one in there it's going to say one modulus two does not equal zero um, which is true so it's going to give us a true value and then it's that's going to be added to the b list because this function returned a true value now say we put two in here and we go and we say two is x, two modulus two. Well, that does equal zero. So we get a false value returned here. Now two is not added to the list. This is essentially filtering out elements based on uh, a predefined function. So obviously you can make your function that you wanna check um, a lot longer and a lot more extensive so you're filtering out more items but this is extremely useful when you're solving problems so rather than going through a for loop and checking every single item um like we might have done with the map function to add things into a list we can just simply call filter um give it the function that we want to filter um based on and then a list and it's going to return that new list so let's just go ahead and run the program here and make sure that everything's working fine um so i'm just going to print out a to the screen and i'm going to print out b and we can see that B has essentially filtered out all of the elements um, that were even. So we get two, six, eight, ten. they are all gone. So now I wanna show you how we can implement this with our map function. Um, why is this useful? What can we use the map function for? So I'm gonna make another list here and I'm gonna call it C. And this time I'm just gonna do list map. And then inside of map, I'm going to do filter. But before filter, I'm just gonna apply another function. So in this case, I'm gonna do add seven. And then in filter here, I'm actually just gonna change this to B because I'm gonna type the same thing. Now let's go over what I just did here. So essentially what's gonna happen now is we're using the map function, which if you don't know, go back and watch the previous video. Um, and we're gonna apply this new list B, which has been filtered. Um, so we filtered out this original list. Uh, now we have one, three, five, seven, nine so far. And based on that list, we're gonna add seven to every element in that list. Now, again, if you wanted to save a line, I could just get rid of B here and I could simply paste that in here, removing list like that. Um, and this would work fine. So let's go ahead and see what actually happens here. Again, we're just taking this new filtered list and now we're applying another function to it, um, in this case, add seven. So let's make sure that this is indeed working. I haven't made a mistake here. So we'll print A again and it will print C and you can see um, that we do indeed get that. So our one add seven, we get eight, our three add seven, we get 10, five, seven, and so on. You can see how this works. Now these are extremely straightforward examples, but if you're doing a list and for example, you wanted to filter out any elements that contained a certain digit or um, that met a certain criteria, then you could create a more advanced filter function uh, function to filter based off of that had a whole bunch of criteria and then it's gonna return a true or false value. So I'll show you here, if I do something like just return true, um, and I don't return a condition per se, um, then every element in my list is gonna be um, sent through because nothing's gonna be filtered out. So again, if I print C here, 
all of our elements are here. So we have 10 elements because we're always returning true. Same thing if I always return false, then none of our elements are going to be printed because, well, it's always false. So the way to think about it is, um, I'll uncomment out this for a second, is what this filter function does is it's going to apply a function that gives us a true or false value um, to every element in the list. If when that element is applied to that function, we get a true value, then it's going to be created in that new list, which filter returns to us um, like that. Now, again, yeah, this is really useful for solving problems. And I just want to show you what happens if I do something like return one um, and I'll print C to the screen here. You can see we get every um, every element out of here. So pretty much the way is uh, in Python, something is said to be true as long as it's not zero if it's a number. So like if I pass something like high, well, if you say is high true, technically high is true. Um, again, if I print C, uh, we're still going to get every element. Although I didn't pass the value true, um, high technically evaluates to a true value in Python. The only thing that's not going to evaluate to a true value is something like zero. So now if I print C, you can see we get an empty list. Um, just wanted to add that in at the end there, um, teach you something you might not have known there. Um, so anyways, that's been it for the filter function. In the next video, I'm going to tie these all together with something called lambdas. And what they look like is that. Uh, you can see it highlights here as a keyword. And pretty much this is a kind of function that we can use. So we don't have to keep creating all these other ones at the beginning of our program. Um, and they're extremely useful and they're really cool. So make sure you guys stay tuned for the next video. And I'm going to be explaining how we can use those with lists, uh, maps, and on their own. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you again in the next video.